everybody and I don't have my ears in but I'm sure you can hear the rain I know you hear the rain and I need to back this stuff out of here this is how it's gonna be for the next couple of days and the temps are gonna slowly get down into the 40s uh, I guess the high will be look at that the high is gonna be about it'll be still be in the 60s but the low for a couple of those nights are gonna be in the 40s low 40s in fact and that really is very close especially the fact that we're getting this rain now yeah i was gonna say the night that we're actually getting the rain in the night that it's gonna actually be 40 41 specifically it's a dry night but i don't even want to say that because all of the nights and days around that one dry night it's gonna be very rainy hey there i know i am being sort of a uh, i don't know what i'm doing i'm just uh clowning around out here really no i'm not i really am in the process of moving a lot of my things inside and why the heck i have these well this is sort of the assembly line for things that are going inside. And it wasn't raining earlier, although it has been throughout the night. Um, really and so, of course, I was on the phone, got a call. But anyway, I had got, where is, okay, anyway. I had got a call. I, I actually have ordered a dendrobium that I thought was a Laturia. And here it is, right here. I thought I was getting atrial violation, but the tag here says, Atrial pupurium. I don't know what atrial pupurium is. No idea. But when I go in here and look on my computer at, this is how I do my research. I go to the orchid species website and my hands are wet so it's mouse is not gonna work right there we go so i'm gonna go down to d dendrobium come on now hey there andrew yeah long time no see i am trying to figure out this new orchid that I thought was a Laturia, and actually it's not. Um, here we go, Dendrobium. My hands are wet because I've been outside, and so this mouse is just not really cooperating like it should. You know what? Hold on one second. I'll be right back. So ask me that again, something about the scale. You're talking about the scale operation. <laughs> well, 
Well, that's what I've been using pretty much the whole summer is uh, that technique. Just because it's less invasive, I I don't like to use chemicals if I don't have to. And I'm gonna look up this atropurium because I thought it was a Laturia. But when I look it up, I did not even realize there was such an atropurium. Okay, there we go. And look, it says osteophyllum. Okay, so dendrobium atropurium, Myanmar, Sulawesi, the New Guinea, many miniature sized hot warm epiphyte, blooms on short inflorescence, thick black claret, short lived flowers, osteophyllum, atropurium. Hmm, interesting. So, what I thought I was getting, folks, was something from, it is from New Guinea, but it was not what I wanted. But I'll stick with it anyway, even though it is not the right plant. Um, I think I'm going to get another one. I have to get atrovialatium. And these books right here, Orchids of New Guinea, are really good ones. This is the same one, but they are different uh, different editions. And just to see if there is such a atropure, atropurium in here, pretty sure that there will be an atrovialatium. There's John Sonii. There's not an H of Elysium. I will be very shocked. Macphilum. Here we go. H of Elysium. So what I wanted, most famous orchid in Papua New Guinea. 1900 and survived. Grows as an epiphyte. Pseudobos are narrow at the base, widening in a club shape above. Inflorescence about 20 centimeters. They are fragrant, heavy s textured, very long lasting. Flowers face downwards. And, you know, I'm not even sure if that other flower is even in here because it would be. This is Papua New Guinea. Let me look just back here. Atro. I'm pretty sure it's not. Androbium, atrovialation. No, it's not. Let me look in this one just for measure, because these definitely have different, different orchids in them, although the same kind of general. Okay, so dendrobium, and there is no atro, whatever I'm working with here. So let's run outside. Real quick and take another look at this. So I have it sitting in water. This says Atropupurium. And flowers are kind of hanging, pointing downwards. I mean, it definitely looks like a Latoria with those spots. Although it is a little bit more of a white flower than Typical Laturia, and that actually may be the difference. Patriolation is more sartreuse. And so that might actually be the difference. But yeah, I have plants that are lined up that way going into the greenhouse. Um, that way, slowly moving. You can see I've got cattleyas over here. And I've got, these are the ones that I've moved from the chair up here. Some of these are epidendrums, but dendrobiums. Um, this is, of course, that's uh, Silver King. This is my dendrobium dipernici that could possibly be spiking. That is my Spectabile Ari. Uh, well, I'm certainly in the rain. Yeah, here I am the water now. It doesn't really need to be sitting in here. It sits way high up here. 
but I should have left it down because looking at some of the new growths, and I think it might be spiking. There's new growth happening. So I'll keep you posted on all of that as well. Um, but yeah, some of these have just finished blooming. This is my Baptia grape wax that I'm going to slowly move into the greenhouse. Um, it does have a, this new growth forming, so that's good. And where is that other? Somewhere. Oh, I put it down here, which is risking it right here. That's my, that has that sheath that's filling up. So risking leaving those out here, honestly. But other than that, really, things are okay. The temperatures are decent. My recent repots of those angraecums look, still pre look pretty good, and I know they're enjoying this water. There's that gongora. That's grossa, gongora grossa. That that's liking all of this water. And as is, I bet this my new scutacaria right here that I just mounted. In the past, when I've grown these, literally the leaves, one of the leaves have fallen off. Not so quickly, but especially the ones from Echogenera, but it's still on the plant. So that's a good thing. And something else that is good is, I never talk about this, but this is my ligophyllum. And this probably needs to go inside as well because when this plant stops its growths, which I believe it has reached its terminal growth at the top, then they like a little bit of a rest and then they do bloom, but they do like that rest, not a full on dry rest, but just a lessening of water. But that's what I found that they need in order for them to bloom. Uh, they usually bloom in the spring and that still is just wonderful. Here's my uh, crazy arachno that I am still waiting to see roots and maybe some growths. There's those buds there. There's my perennii. Miyaka stars, and then here's Hoku Jin. Yep. Oh, this is something really, really good. This is, I show this very infrequently. This is my Jumelia Confusa. No, it's not Confusa. It's uh, Puntada. Well, it, this was already in, I had put it in this. This was an import from Madagascar. And this was one of the first ones that I got to actually survive. And you can see the little babies that are coming up. Well, I have, I had put this desiccated. It was desiccated at the time. This piece of angraecum. Um, I believe it's in, from dip, no, it's Birdomense. I believe that's what it is. And it was very desiccated. And I'm not sure what that nubbin is. It could be a new root. But there's a root there. And it's just clipped to the side of that basket. Bare root. So when this goes inside, that will be hitchhiking along. You can see it's just hanging there. But it is alive and well. And it has fattened up and doing great. I think this is going to be a survivor as well. This is my and Gracum florentulum, which the rest of the plant was a goner this summer, 
probably because it was getting too much light. But this one piece over here is still putting out growth. It's still pretty healthy. Hopefully it will put out roots. This is my Kumarinse, which is Jamelia. It actually had bloomed already earlier. And this is my Aranthes Ramosa that has nice roots. And it's just in straight sphagnum. And that has a reservoir in it that keeps it moist. These love water. So, anywho, what are the comments? Hey there, Tracy. So, that's pretty much the deal, as I was saying. Um, like I was saying, this is the lineup to go in. Uh, I really I moved this from the fence because you can see how the leaves are browning there. And... This is the only one. I mean, there's that little baby down there. This is my Epidendrum Nocturnum. And also these Brasavala hive uh, species just don't look so well because of all this water. Um, but this, my Angracum, here's the species here, is still doing good. There is a bloom for me. You can see the, the little spur coming out the back. And then there's another inflorescence there. I showed this on my video already this morning. There's a couple more spikes here. And I know there's one down at the base. So, and this is something else that needs to get in there. This is a Sunny Delight. And, but they're okay for now. Here's my Selogeny Multiflora, which gave me these two new growths. No blooms, unfortunately. You can see how that's not liking the rain. Um, so, yeah. I think this is going to bloom for me from one of these canes. See that that one, I think it's this one. And I got to put this one in as well. This is my Ar Arides uh, uh, fragrance, fragrance, Odor Odorata, Odorata. That's that. Um, let me look back here real quick. Got some of these epidendrums, reed stems, and then here's this. This is not this tag. That's my grape wax. And then here is my Dan Canico. Flower is still okay, pretty pretty. And here is a Laturia here. That's a cross. This is Macrophyllum times Shurishii, however you pronounce that. And there's my Phragmopedium Grande. And this is my um, Spectabile, my Dendrobium Spectabile. And this is the new growth that it gave me. So yeah, I guess I can take these out of water. They're getting a little bit, a little bit too much right now. These are some gongoras, and that's a pafinia rugosa. That's got that new growth, and this is a paphenopia. Paphenopia which I just got from Equigenera, which you can see those nice roots. Good, good, good. And there's the other that I just got from Equigenera, which is my Polysychnus chulifera. And I still have firm pseudobulbs. 
Yeah, haven't lost any leaves yet. So it's over there in some shade. So things are looking not so bad. And of course, there's my barcaria spike there, and there's the other spike that's right there. And there's a spike here on that, which is, it looks like, no, that's not a bud. That's my Leptotes Bone Kiana. And what else? Here is, this is my macrophyllum right here. It's giving me another growth, and this is maturing growth. And this has to go inside pretty soon. This is my Aranthi, no, Arangus Modesta. Yep. Nice growth this year. Sat outside all summer and got rained on. Of course, my Acreopsis showed up a little late for the show. It's been really nice having that in my display. Especially with five spikes. One, two, three, four, and five. So, anywho, there's a spent little flagellaris bloom. But, yeah, I'm just going to keep moving plants towards the greenhouse. Some of these will have to go, but a lot of these in here will have to wait until, um, you know, I get up some benches. So, here's another den that's doing really well that... I mounted on that twig that I bought back from um, the rainforest. Lake, uh, it's out in the Pacific Northwest. And it was bare root. And it, the roots have attached itself on that mountain. It's given me some nice growths. You can see those roots in there. And the growth, this is a deciduous. I don't think it's a Latoria, though. So, anyway, that's about it. Although I'm really loving, loving, loving these growths on my Colostylus Parkinsonianum that are really nice and healthy. And there's that growth, and then there's that colostylus up there, and there's this one. So, nice root on that trichocentrum. So, yeah. And there's that other trichocentrum. That's my Stacy eye up here, enjoying the moisture. You can see those roots. And... The growths, these are the new growths. One, two, and here's three. Yay. So, there's my adorable, Nodosa adorable there. And I think this is a David Sander here. And this, no. Uh, this is my Jiminy Cricket right here. It did not have such a great year. It blasted. It's gross. This is the only one that made it. But it gave me another. But the roots are attached to the mount. If only the gross would stay. This is a Minnie Mouse that I got from Bill Toms. And I actually just recently remounted it onto this piece of uh, ceramic. So I don't think it's doing much of anything. Here's a, a, a flagellar spike right there. This is usually the time when my encyclias, not my encyclias, but my uh, busavalas really start doing things. Here's that Miltonia I got from Tony Wells. It's Candida that 
is a warmer growing Miltonia fragrant flower. And it was a miracle that it attached itself to this ceramic pot with just the sphagnum. But it has, it has, this up here is, that's an amethyst, BC amethyst. This is my Kaneko. Anyway, folks. And that's another perennial times Akalas that should be blooming. Is it definitely is big? It was my project plant right here. Got those nice roots in there. Hopefully a new growth will emerge. And there's another trichocentra, my nana. That was judged. And there's that other pedendrum that's got that spike there. So I'm back to where I started. Right over here. And back to this atropurium, which is not atrovialation, which is what I wanted. This is a spider lily, which is Tokanaga times Alexandri. And here is my Alexandri, which is giving me a new growth back there. These usually bloom fall into winter, so I'm really hoping, fingers crossed, that it's going to do something. There's my Epi Schwerth, Schwerth, Schwerth Feine, where is it? Schwerth, Schwerthianum. And it doesn't look so good right now. Looks like it has been dry, which I don't understand because we've been getting so much water. And those like water and highlight, so it should be doing better than what it what it appears to be doing, but what can I do? Uh, but yeah, I am slowly, like I said, moving things that way towards the greenhouse. Because it is getting fallish. 40s and raining is not good for orchids and not over, over repeated nights where they just stay wet. This is my Herculoclossum, and this is one of these is an album. Herculoclossum, and this is my Cumulatum that bloomed earlier this week because of the, the uh, change in the barometric pressure. I know. So, anyway, uh, that's pretty much enough for right now. Yeah, there's really not much to show. This is something new that I just mounted on this. This is my uh, Encyclia Oxypedala, which is very, very nice. It's a fragrant um, epidendrum, I mean Encyclia, and I like it a lot. The fragrance is really musky. It's really different than the fragrance of some of the other Encyclias. Uh, so yeah, that's about it, about it. This is, that's my Brasavala retusa here that's got a root from this encyclia going through it. And Sino is a cucala, this is a crazy arachno cross. Yes, crazy arachno times golden chain. So I love my crazy arachno, as you know. And anyway, it is starting to rain a little bit harder. And I should just get off a few. So stay tuned for the arrival of my atrovialation and not atropurium. But anyway, I am going to continue doing what I'm doing because I am always afraid this time of the year that I'm going to lose um, some of these cattleyas, especially just anything that's in this rain that's getting a lot of rain, especially those bifoliates back here that I really have been watching. So anyway... Anyway, folks, thank you for watching. 
and I can't even see because my glasses are all fogged up. But um, to your orchids. See you guys soon. Tomorrow is the most fragrant ass. Don't miss it. Now I'm all foggy. Okay. Enjoy your kids, folks. Bye.